Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Yeah. Welcome to the 21st edition of The Prop Show. And on this week, we have Nick Neal from You Move, head guy, top person. Hi, Nick. Do Hello. that thing. <laughs> Roll the VT. Good work. Thanks, yeah, good stuff. Happy New Year, boys and girls. Happy yes, New you year. too. Uh, coming up on the show this week, we've got reaction to the big e-move story that broke a week or so ago. Uh, we've also got a rather interesting stat from Right Move that you might be interested in. Yeah. Um, obviously, we'll be chatting to Nick Moore, and uh, and we'll be talking all things festive. Yes, yeah. sir. So, um, you, you start the show. Okay. Well, e-move, big story in the industry trade see, press this when, week. When? Um, no, it was a month ago. Continuity. For sake. <laughs> <laughs> Last month. Last month. <laughs> last month. Last month. We're not filming this in December. No, promise. we're not. No. It's no outside. Snow is falling. I tell you what, that Brexit result. Oh, yeah. wow. That'd be good. <laughs> if you'd like to go into a bit more depth, what happened with the Brexit yeah. result? Didn't, oh, you, uh, you didn't watch it. Oh, this is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> didn't watch it. Okay, so no, but he moved. Like, um, I've got a little sort of side story, but your reaction as a, a journalist of the industry? Um, to be honest with you, I'm... <sighs> was it expected? Were you shocked? Was it on the way? Was it... I mean, I feel for the people that are on the ground, the vendors that lost 900 quid, essentially, and quite a few and, of them. And you've got also the 200 members of staff that mm. lost their wages mm. as well. Mm. Yes. Um, Pre-Christmas. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, let's be honest, Russell Quirk, a uh, big name in the industry, even, you know, loved the sound of his own voice, but at the same time... Uh, some people didn't like him. Uh, a lot of people did like him. Yeah. He's very chalk and cheese. Um, I think he was let down by people. Some people say he might have let himself down. I don't know. I don't know the full story. Maybe we should if we had someone important enough. <laughs> 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 Industry big shot. Yeah, you go. I mean, Nick, what's, what's your thought? Well, I think it's... Uh, As the CEO of you, Not the CEO, MD. No, MD. MD. I can't yeah. promote myself. Not that's <laughs> it. Um, I, I think, think we can give you promotion. You can do. I'll offer today. I think, I'll do yeah, right. I'll do <laughs> I think we're going to see a lot more industry consolidation. That's the problem. So whether it's Russell Quirk and Emu or anybody else, it's just a fortune and circumstance. But we've seen countrywide get shares go down, all of course, sorts of stuff yeah. going on. Consolidation, I think, is going to be the big story for 2019. Do you think right. that's the contra Do you think that's the market contracting? Do you think that's as a result of um, you know as a result of Brexit? As a result of um, things like the, I mean, obviously slightly different, but the, the tenant fee ban and, and those sort of things. Do you think that's things just tightening up a bit? Yeah, I think the tenant fee ban is, is uh, responsible for the EMU thing, but that's a separate no, no, story, no. which is important. But no, no, no. Uh, I think Brexit does have a big part to play, and we've seen probably a couple of years of economic kind of just bumping yeah, along the bottom, yeah, not a huge yeah. amount of growth. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we don't want to get into the politics of whether we should have chosen to leave the European Union or not. Let's yeah. leave that for no, another day. No, no, a more no, no, intelligent no. field than me, certainly. <laughs> no. um, but yes, the market has slowed down. So consequently, the pie has shrunk and there's not enough to go around. Yeah. I, I think it's deeper than that. I think a lot of people uh, started these online estate agents and just thought it would just it would create critical mass. The purple bricks caught the wave just at the right time. I think they did. Didn't they it? had yeah. some very clever marketing, which I thought was bang on. The Expensive, front but true. Yeah. Um, and they've taken the lion's share of that online market. Um, and I think a lot of others have come along thinking I'll have a slice of that. Mm. I mean, look at Yopa. They've been throwing. They've been, they've had even more money to throw at it, and it just shows mm. you that money doesn't. Get yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Yopas market shares are yeah. falling. I think what we're seeing though is more players coming into a market that isn't growing. This is the problem. So True. yes, they've taken a, the, a bigger slice of the pie, which has meant less for everybody else. Mm. So that that's the issue is that we have seen more people come in, and, and you look at the number of folks that leave independents or, mm. or corporate high street firms and go and set up mm. on their own. They're effectively online agents because they don't have a high street branch. If that's yeah. how you, yeah, uh, yeah. if that's how you describe well, it, it's not, not numbers, the way I would. But there got you go. Some numbers to share with you. Back in 2004, there was just under 10,000 estate agents. Yep. Today, there's around 23,000, 24,000 mm -hmm. estate agency offices or uh, locations. But the number of houses that are sold have gone down. So mm. 2004, it's 1 1.8 million houses. You know, in 2018, it's going to end up probably at 1.1, 1.2. So you have you a know, lot of houses. 25,000 house agents selling 1.2 million houses versus, uh, you know, 15 years ago, we had 
just under 10,000 estate agents selling 1.8 mm. million houses. The numbers just don't stack yeah, up. No, they don't at all. No, I know it's the same, you're yeah, right, we say, well, we'll charge you a branch uh, based on the average number of listings per branch. That's what defines a branch as far as right move pricing is concerned. But of course, the number of listings per branch yes. is going down. Yes. So they're charging for more branches as well. Right, yeah. yeah which is good for them. Yeah, what, yeah, was your... right, maybe not doing too much. <laughs> <laughs> what was your story about eMove? Uh, right, yeah, actually. Um, so this, was a few, this was a month ago. This was a <laughs> month to six weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, chatting to one of my good lady friends, hi Becky, uh, one of the school mums doing the, the school run. And two of the mums were talking about how she just um, heard about eMove going bust. Um, and so I sidled into the conversation. So oh, what was it? And uh, anyway, long story short, she clearly lost her £900 that she paid up front. Um, the annoying thing was that because... The, the Joe public don't know enough about these new online offerings. She didn't really know what she was getting into. And I think the guy had been around once, a photographer had been around once, and then she'd not seen anyone. This She bought a house on back in May, um, paid a 900 quid up front, zero contact, zero customer service, and possibly overvalued the house to get the listing. Mm -hmm. uh, we were talking about that pre-show, weren't yep. we, about the, we'll come on to that again in a minute. So uh, as it happens, good friend of ours, a uh, friend of the show show, lives in a, a village or a town nearby, won't name names, um, but they're actually running a bit of a marketing scheme where they'll take on any eMove customers and mm -hmm. in a sense reimburse the 900 quid that these customers have lost and whether that's altering their fee structure slightly. Um, but I think that's, I mean, would you do that at your place? Would you, are you looking for eMove customers that have been wronged? To, to be honest, we, we take a lot of listings from all sorts of agents where they haven't sold. So lots and lots of listings come to market and they don't sell with the agent that brings it to market. So right. one of the um, sort of big wins for us is because we have real local people in areas and they get to know their market, yeah, we don't sure. operate yeah. all across the UK where we don't have somebody on the ground. Yeah, so yeah. we're not pretending that that's the case. We actually have somebody locally. Um, we take lots of instructions from agents where they haven't sold it. Maybe they've overvalued it. Maybe they're just not delivering the right kind of marketing exposure, whatever it might be. Yeah. We take these houses on and we sell them. And often that's at a higher price, sometimes the same, sometimes a little bit lower. And it's about the overall marketing package and the level of care and attention I think that that so, local yeah. agent and that's what it always comes down we to. We said earlier, really, it's an emotional decision, <laughs> yep. having you know your house sold and, and buying another one. And mm. it's something that, I mean, you talked earlier about being a salesperson. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts <laughs> on the person, the agent, doing the selling? Because yeah. it clearly yeah. they don't sometimes. No, no it is. It's absolutely critical. And a lot of high street agents in the UK and online, it doesn't really matter. They will pitch themselves up with a vendor and say, yep, we'll sell your house for you. We'll do everything you need. We'll be the best agent since sliced bread and we'll get yeah. your house sold and we'll get you the best price. Who can ever quantify the best price? It's yeah, just a yeah, load yeah. of rubbish as far as I'm concerned. Um, and then they put the house on the market and then they ring the vendor up and say, I've got somebody who wants to come and see your house. I'll send them around to see you on Saturday afternoon. Unaccompanied. Unaccompanied. And you think, well, hang on. I've appointed you as the agent to sell my house. Yeah. So when the buyer is in my house looking to buy it, why is the agent not there? Very and not just point. somebody from the office who happens to have a key and works on a Saturday, yes. who's never spoken to the vendor, doesn't know what the motivation is, yeah. Yeah. has never spoken to the buyer, doesn't know what their motivation is, that's has never the seen a house before. The, you know, and the feedback I get from viewers on this is they absolutely hate viewings with a vendor or with somebody that doesn't know the house. Of course, yeah. So, of course, if you're employing somebody to sell your house, you expect them to sell your house. And yeah. that means them being there when that buying decision is taking place in the minds of the buyer. Yeah. And that's how you can put the best deal together. You mean together. the valuers have to actually do some work? <laughs> Indeed they do. Indeed they do. So that's when the sale takes place and that's where you can monetize the best offer. Right, yeah. And there are lots of industry reports now, Get Agent and others, where you can actually determine as an agent whether you're, you whether or not you're getting the best price for your Really, clients. right. Yeah. Best price. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Indeed. Okay, interesting. Just, yeah. Just finish off that story again. Don't mention any names about about how another agent had targeted that property. Yeah. So um, I mean, I passed it on to the friend, but there was a local company in in Grantham where we're based, obviously. Um, that a week previous to the eMove story breaking had actually sent a box of chocolates, I guess, to all eMove mm -hmm. customers with a board outside the house. And a little card. It's been going on for a few days, haven't it? Yeah, exactly. And people were there were rumblings, um, and they sent this nice gift and a card saying, "If you would like to move from eMove um, and place your property with us and let us sell it, we will actually reimburse the nine hundred pounds the fee you've paid up front, um, and the rest is history." Now, as it happens, the story broke. Um, this lady uh, had the card, rang the agent, and they said, "Oh, that offer's not valid anymore because eMove have now gone bust." 
So I don't know what that talk about like. But it doesn't. But that, I guess it doesn't make sense, does it? Like it but that wouldn't have so. made any difference, I guess. And do you know what? It, you know, it comes back. There's so many things wrong with that. Um, if that's the corporate agent, you know, again, it comes back to, and maybe this is some of the root cause of the countrywide issue, is that people in those offices are not the local agents responsible right. for the success of that business. They're just people who are employed to work in an office, and that's a great shame because. You know, maybe the manager or maybe if it was an independent, the owner of that agent would have been absolutely furious with Probably. that kind of response. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. But when you kind of uh, chop, a, chop up all parts of the house sale process yeah. and give it to different people who don't know the property, they don't know the marketing campaigns that are going on, they don't know the strategic objectives of the agent, the financials, all of these different things, it leads them to make the wrong decision. Yeah, I could imagine. That was the wrong decision. Yeah, well, yeah. 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 Like I say, we won't name names, but I mean, we, we don't sell houses, do we? But we thought it was a cracky marketing strategy yeah. to target e-move customers or old customers and say, let's have your business. Mm. But yeah. You mentioned, sorry, go on. No, no. Uh, you mentioned countrywide earlier on, and I just thought I'd get that <laughs> What's the chair price doing? Right? <laughs> hey, so I told you we wouldn't tell the joke this week. We delegate it's this. It's bouncing around nine or ten feet at the time <laughs> of uh, recording. Yeah. It's time for Ask the Prop Show. It's very festive. Fe festive, nice. isn't it? Festive. Fe festive. 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 Uh, so... Uh, time to ask the prop show. Got so, the MD of you moving. We've right? got the MD of you moving. Yeah, yeah. yeah So, how many um, branches? Offices? 125. Big in the game. Big in the game. Yeah. So, sit, answer me this question. We have a stat that says that 60% mm -hmm. of all property sells with the second mm -hmm. agent. Second yep. agent. The second agent. Not mm -hmm. the first one that comes to market. Okay. Yep. Is that a real stat? Do you agree with that? And why do you think that is? Okay. Well, it's as real as far as Zoop, Laura, Right Move tell us it's real. Happiness. So you, okay, arguably well, you'd uh, arguably expect you'd them agree to, with that, uh, yeah. to agree with that. Yeah. Um, the reason for that is because I think a lot of agents are just chasing the deal. They're chasing the listing. Yeah. They're not chasing the outcome, which is a real problem. So if you're an online agent, you get paid for listing. Yeah. You're going to want to get to the listing and you're not really fussed what happens after yeah. that. If you work in a high street agent who is competing against the onlineers. Yes. Some people have in their head that they've got to compete against the onlineers. They're yep. chasing the listing. Uh, they're not really bothered about the outcome, which is a bad thing because mm -hmm. no one gets paid unless they are sales, unless you charge up front. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we know how so, that goes. Indeed. Um, so lots and lots of houses are coming to market uh, under false pretenses, let's say, because an agent may have gone out and overvalued the house because um, they just want to win the listing. Yeah. Is that, um, a, is that a really effective way of winning, you think? It's a good way of winning, but it's a bad way of uh, selling. Business, yeah, so. yeah, it's okay. no good for the I vendor mean, at all. I, I've been in the industry now 25 years, and, and this old boy across the road used to say, oh, Chris, you've got to have it before you can sell it. Yeah. Valid. Yeah. yeah. And that absolutely is the problem. So you're quite right. You have got to have it before you can sell it. So a lot of agents will go out and overvalue in order to win the instruction. But the outcomes are either they lose the listing to somebody else, so they've just wasted the time. Yeah. So a listing is... Um, a liability until you sell it and then yeah. it becomes an asset so you're just taking on lots of liabilities so it's not good for the agent yeah and then it's not good for the vendor either because if you do sell it it's going to be as a function of having reduced the price in order to get a sale mm. and if you go back to uh, some research by which again it's not just me making this stuff no, up no, no, no. um which was saying that if you overvalue a house by just five thousand pounds it will take 60 days longer to sell and it will get nineteen thousand pounds less than it would have done had you valued it. Well, I've, I've, I've That's seen a great that. Start. I have yeah. seen that. In, you know, you put something on that should be two hundred and fifty. You put it on at two seven five, and then when you eventually you do yeah. bring it back down yeah. to two fifty, and I'm sure there's many agents mm -hmm. out there that see this. Eventually, sometimes you have to bring it down to something like two three five to get yeah. the thing on. Because it's been on the market. So well. going so going back to the original question, then, do you think that is do you think that is the predominant reason why the second agent sells because the first agent overvalues, the price slides to the what the value should have been in the first mm -hmm. instance the second person comes in values it correctly and then gets the sale yeah well there is that so sometimes you know you'll take on a house and put it on at the same price it could just be the marketing that's been wrong so that mm -hmm. is one of the reasons why a house doesn't sell but it's not the only reason right uh, the other reason is about how high street branches are typically structured yeah so they're structured quite efficiently from the agent perspective but it's not structured in a way that's going to achieve the best outcome for the seller so how going talking about your agency mm -hmm. your you classify yourself as a as a hybrid yep 
So talk to us a bit about what what is a hybrid agent? What 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 does what does that do? Let's not let's move on. Let's just forget what what it's called hybrid online schmonline. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, what exactly? Let's come back to this original thing. Well, how do you think an office should be structured to get the best for their vendor? Okay, so uh, it's quite simple, and that's down to relationships. So there's some absolutely awesome high street agents out there in the UK, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, and there are some really, really good individual people working in agency, you know, without a shadow of a doubt. So this yeah. isn't about to say everyone who works in online is rubbish or everyone who works in the high street is rubbish. That's not the case. What we do know is this is a people business. So if you're selling your house and you want me to sell it for you, we've either got a rapport or we haven't. If we have, you'll ask me to sell your house. If we haven't, you'll ask somebody else to do it. So if you've chosen me to sell your house, you want me to sell your house, which means me doing everything from start to finish. So. I'll come and talk to you at the appraisal, I'll get to know what your objectives are, where you're looking to move to, why you want to move, all this kind of stuff. Now you move, if it was me, I would do the photography, I would write the brochure, I would put it online, advertise it, all this kind of stuff. And when viewers rang up to view, I would pre-qualify the viewers personally. So I would get their that's backstory. The next, no, that's the next job. No, I would do that. I'd get their backstory, I'd understand their budget, I'd ask them all the boring questions about if they're in a position to move and all this kind of stuff, get nicely qualified. Then at the viewing, that's I'd, the company viewer's job. Yes. No, I'd make sure you've gone out, take the dog for a walk or whatever you want to do. And then I would meet the person at the front door and I'd say hello to them because we'd already had a conversation. I would show them around and I would tailor the viewing according to what they wanted. They might have said they want a back garden, they might want a garage, they might want a workshop, they want a master bedroom ensuite, suite, whatever. Uh, we can structure the viewing according to them. Because you're not home, the vendor's not home, I can do a deal in the house. I can get an offer from them there and then. Or if they don't like it, they're going to be honest with me and tell me why they don't like it, which is important information for yes, you. Yes, because they never tell the event. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I can then say to you, Chris, they don't like your house because we should change it or it's just one of those things, let's just move on. But at least you know as the vendor why your house hasn't sold because a lot of the times vendors say, oh, I had a couple round on Saturday afternoon and they, they left and they said they love the house <laughs> and they, they'd be in touch. <laughs> yeah. And then... I had a pound for every yeah, time exactly. said that. And then the agent rings on Monday, they can't get hold of them or, or whatever. So these, these vendors are left who are doing the viewings themselves. They're left with a situation where their experience is, everybody loves a house. Yeah. But they don't know why nobody's buying it. But Nick, it's like an emotional. Well, this sounds like a perfect sound, way to this, do a viewing, but, but I this, guess a lot of people is. don't do that. But this, <laughs> that sounds, this, this sounds like. Uh, I don't understand why. Is, that this sounds is like estate agency 101. This, yeah, this, yeah, this, yeah. This, this, exactly. this, this, like tailored viewings. That's, that's obvious. If you want a big Who back knew? garden and a kitchen diner, you right. go to those rooms. But, first, I, but, but I mean, if you watch a. That's not good for the agent, though, is it? No, it's not. That's what I'm saying. So Why is it? Why not, though? Why is it not good? It's not as efficient. What, for the slightly, it's, it's slightly less efficient for the agent than it is uh, if you operate a high street model and you split the roles across lots of different and people. Why is it less efficient? Well, if I have to get my car and go and do it, <coughs> well, that's just point one. That's time. Yes. Because yeah. normally the agent stuffs at home around the desk on the phone or something and say, oh, I'm sending Mr. Smith around to see your house. Right. Puts the phone down, job done. Yeah, no He cost, doesn't have to get yeah. in his car, drive there, yeah. do the viewing, which takes anything from five minutes to an hour, who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's got to come back again. But surely... Hmm. Well let, me, well, let me ask it in a different way, though. There has to be a reason why you do it this way. Though. Because it gets results. And, absolutely. <laughs> so this, so the opinion or the... or the. I mean, how many are you selling? What percentage of houses are you selling first? So of houses we bring to market, we complete, not to sell, we complete 70% of those. That's a big number. So. Yeah. And of those we take an offer on, we complete 96.5%. <laughs> but so, this, so the, the, this perception of inefficiency... Is, is wrong because actually whilst the perception is that it's less efficient mm -hmm. on time and resource, on time and resource yeah. mm -hmm. actually by doing it this way which is in i guess from the layman more labor intensive yep. actually sees a significant better significantly better result it does Go so actually to the top of the class. <laughs> so, you're, so you're overly so you're, so you're compensated in the in the right way yeah I guess. that's right and this is why we're able to charge uh, the fees that we do so we don't have the you know expensive expenses of a high street office mm -hmm. we've got a couple of franchisees that have shops for various reasons but typically we don't have shops people work from a service office mm -hmm. typically mm -hmm. um so we don't have the same overhead so we can still charge good fees yeah um, we're probably slightly ahead of the local average fee wherever that might be um but we can justify it because we get superior outcomes Jeez. and not not only that Customers love us and rates us very Going highly. back, no, no, no. Going back, then. Going back, just before you cut me, cut across. Right? 
I love this key. The hybrid, the, 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 <laughs> this this word hybrid. What do you mean by that? Well, AC is just a means of differentiating because people assume that if you don't have a high street shop, you're online. So you're not a high street. No, but everybody's online. Of course they are. Yeah. So Everyone's every single online. agent in the yeah. UK is an online agent. Of course agent. they are. Some of them choose to have shops. Yeah. So there's this kind of thing called online agents. Yes. So which you, are purple bricks. You... Typically characterised by charging up front. Yeah. Um, lower sort of content type service, so they yeah. rely on the vendor to do lots of work themselves. And it's actually purple bricks stuff. and yopers mainly. Yeah, yeah. yeah can, so, you can't say it, I can. Yeah, so if you regard them as online, that's fine. Yes. So we, we're kind of in a different pool. Because they so, consider themselves hybrid. Yeah, but we're, 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 so we keep coming up with a name that sets ourselves apart yes, from somebody yeah. else, and then everyone latches onto it because they know we're getting the results. So <laughs> yeah. um, we literally do not charge a single penny up front to anybody. Uh, so no in the enhanced marketing marketing packages that yeah, yeah. high street agents charge up front. Yeah. We don't charge a single penny up front. There's no contract whatsoever. So as a vendor, if you want to walk, that's fine. fine. You walk. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. But nobody does. No. Because we get the results. Yeah. 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 Um, so we literally do not charge a penny until the house is completed, and that is why we complete so many because our local franchisees are incentivized to get the house completed. Of course. Don't yeah, yeah, yeah. As Chris yeah. would say. They've got skin in the game. A I'm, lot of skin in the game. I tell yeah. you, I tell you, now you really need to tell whether your local franchisee because this message is not getting across. Which franchisee? In 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 this this part of the world, the messages that you're saying mm -hmm. about what you move can do compared to other estate agents, I'm genuinely blown away. I am. Yeah, I've got stats. Yeah. Well, indeed. And, and whether that's whether that's the franchisee um, mm -hmm. or, or actually your mm -hmm. the, we'll your the message. Yeah. <laughs> You're not getting the yeah. message across well. Well, well, that's a very good point, and I would agree with that. So, within our franchise network, then everybody knows <coughs> this is what we do, and this is why we have uh, agents independents who come and take a franchise with us because they're the kind of person that wants to deliver a fantastic result and they're going to work hard to do it and all this kind of stuff. So, we're taking on more and more existing agents now into the network, which is great. Uh, we've previously taken on people from outside the industry and we train them what to do, so that's fine, and that's why. They come with some really, really good sales uh, and service backgrounds. Um, but to get that message across to the market as a whole, you know, I don't have 10 million quid to go and spend on the TV no. and all that stuff. And I'm not, I don't think that's really worthwhile. Otherwise, you end up like tree moving others. That's not really the way to go. But you're right, getting that message across is very tough. And what makes it sort of slightly annoying is we get those letters. If we've got a house in the market, we'll get a letter from a uh, competing agent and saying, We've just seen you put your house on the market with your online agent. Come with us and we'll give you your feedback. Well, we don't charge fees up front. And it's a lack of, it's a lack of knowledge of the competitors where we operate about what we do. Well, that's probably that's why you're here today. Network. And later, chaps, I'm going to take Nick out to the back studio and we'll have a really serious interview. Yeah, well, there's some good stuff to cover, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah. 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 And myth busting, no doubt. Myth busting. Yes. Myth -busting. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Let's mm. find out what a man on the ground thinks. Who? Steve? Steve says! It's a great time to buy. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Um, He's into hubs and hybrids. He's yeah, into hubs and Luton. hybrids. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah we we'll get later later this month, in January. Fact, in fact, why <laughs> don't we have a little uh, snippet from Matt Wells, who's also big into the hubs. He, he, hubs and hybrids, Matt yeah, Wells. Thanks, Chris Watkin here with uh, Matt Wells from the Yorkshire Dales. And Matt, I've been following you now for the last 12, 18 months, Look, following you on Facebook, following you what you do with your agency in Harwell Estates. And if you don't mind, I asked you in here today because I thought you had a really interesting business model. Um, the first thing I want to talk to you about is, is that at Harwell Estates, you seem to limit your listings and tell people that you'll only list so many a month. Why is that? We do. Uh, in fact, Chris, there's a couple of reasons why. Um, we are a very small boutique agency. Um, I only work two days, sometimes three days a week in the business. Um, I have a part-time administrator who also does viewings as well. She works three days. So for a small business, I think it's important that we deliver the service that we've set out to deliver. And we can only do that if we limit the number of clients that we take on board. So we work on a four in, four out. So as a simple example, if we've got four completions, uh, which is what we average a month, um, it makes way for four new clients. So four happy movers on the way, four new clients coming on board. You actually publicly say 
I'm I'm only going to put on four this month. Is it going to be you? Surely you're shooting yourself in the foot there, aren't you? Uh, yeah. Some people say that, but um, you will find that you never had a bad you never have a bad month for listings because there is always someone that wants to be your next customer. Okay. Uh, and okay, you know we can bend the rules, we can break the rules slightly if we feel that we can take on more clients, then we will take them on. But I think small boutique agencies need to stick to the core principle of the offering, which is if you are small, if you are boutique, then don't pile them high. Because if people want pile it high, then you've got the corporate agents to go to. Okay. So you, you, if you don't mind me saying, your fee structure as well, you have a menu of fees, you have split fees, you have upgrade fees. And I'd like to talk about that in greater depth. Um, in some other videos, if that's okay. Yeah, but overall, if you don't mind me saying, the fees are quite cheap. Cheap by comparison. Yes, go on. And I've come from the corporate estate agency background where I, I managed offices, I managed clusters of offices, uh, and we were targeted on big fees. But when you actually break down the whole concept behind the fee, the fee is what an individual business needs to charge to run a profitable business. So I don't need to charge any more than I charge. And when you combine an attractive fee with an attractive service, as far as I'm concerned, and you'll see from the strength of the business, that it, for us, it's win-win. Because you said earlier on, you only work two or three days a week. Yeah, yeah. And I believe that you only have one part-time member of staff. Correct. Yet you've got 20, 25% market share in your patch, which is a few small towns around the A1, around Beedale, going yep. up towards Richmond. It doesn't seem to add up. How the hell do you do it? It's just smart work. It, okay. it's, it's as simple as that. We, we've implemented systems. I always refer to we. Maybe I'm doing myself uh, an injustice there. I have implemented systems that allow me to work on the coal face or the front line of the business two days a week, which is every Thursday and every Tuesday when I'm available for valuations, viewings, and I'm, if not out on appointments, in the office. The rest of the time is what I call grazing. Now, the systems that we've got in place, the technology that we've got in place, allows me to pretty much work from anywhere. So even if I'm holiday, I can take my iPad and iPhone with me and, and I can work from the beach. I can work from the poolside. It's what I call grazing. So we don't have a, a set time when people can contact us. So you will find that every business has a number of hours in the day and a number of hours or days each week and a number of days mm -hmm. each month that they have to get the work done. We don't restrict it. So we, we spread the workload out over okay. a, a, a greater period of time. What, so you're almost well open, what, 15, 18 hours a day? If you think eight to eight. Eight to eight. Eight to eight. We're public. Okay. So from eight in the morning through to eight in the evening, seven days a week. Maybe in some future videos, we could talk about how you can only work two days a week, how you can restrict your um, listings, and also do it at some fairly decent fees. Is that all right? Absolutely fine. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting chat. Interesting yeah. chat. Yeah. <laughs> Not that was a big cyclist. Big cyclist. Big yeah. cyclist. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. One final question. One final yeah, question. Go on, then. Okay. Um, do you think high street estate agents underestimate you hybrids? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah, and it's not just hybrids. It's to underestimate their competition, what, whatever form that may take. So it could be, um, you know, the guy who's pitched up up the road in a shop. You know, who knows? Uh, I think some agents and uh, kind of broadening my experience of interaction with other agents to get lots of different views they firmly believe that what they do is the only way and is right mm. yeah. and that in any industry forget estate agency that is a terminal mm. approach to take yeah so if people are not prepared to look at different ways of doing things and not prepared to look at actually how how your um, product or service works from the customer's perspective if you never stop and look at that critically then you will become terminally defunct. Um, and that's not to say whether it's high street or online, it doesn't really matter. That's just a general business principle. That is, yeah. And well, Japanese constant improvement. Case you have to, like, they're always to. looking at, yeah. But any business, our business, our business is, is exactly the same. You know, it doesn't matter whether it's property, whether it's film, whether it's, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is. We're always looking at the next step, what we can add in, how we can improve, what we can change, mm -hmm. what, you know, in, 
in property terms, often it's it's prop tech and stuff that yeah. we can add into streamline the business. Mm -hmm. And as it's what new technologies are pushing mm -hmm. forward, so that we can improve the quality of what we do. Um, but I don't. I think any business that stands still is dead. You yeah, know? and that that that's that is yeah. life. And, and unfortunately, the way some of the, some of the corporates, maybe some of the bigger ones, train their staff is is quite wrong. So, for example, I've been into many appraisals before. And uh, you ask for feedback afterwards, don't you? And uh, the vendor, typically the most common bit of feedback I used to get when I ran my uh, business was, you were the only one to ask me what I wanted to achieve mm. and why mm. I was moving. Yeah. All the other agents turned up and said, we're the best agent in town because, 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 and you should work with us. Uh, yeah. Barged their way through the house and kind of um, very arrogant about that. And the customers absolutely hated it. So I'm not going to work with these guys. Yeah. Uh, all you need to do is sit down with somebody and ask them what they're trying to achieve. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if they build a bond and trust you, you're going to win the business. Trust. Yeah, I trust. always say that. People do business with their to. trust. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Again, that you know, seems that's... like a estate agency 101 to me. It yeah. is. Why are you moving? How long have you been here? Did mm -hmm. your kids grow up here? Yeah. That instant rapport that you build, mm -hmm. and then you go yeah. on from there. But also, I guess, you know. Uh, I'd want, I would, you know, you know, I'm keen to move in the next sort of two years, three years. Oh, I'd like to, <laughs> oh, yeah. we, I'd very much like to move, um, you know, to, to out, out of town, to mm -hmm. a village, bigger house, you know, what have you. And, but, but I feel like we've invested a lot of time, energy and money into our existing property. Mm -hmm. And what I would like from, from my agent is for them to care. The last time we had our house valued, mm -hmm. you'll love this, the agent rang us up and said, yeah, been round to value the house. <laughs> I went, what? <laughs> right. Yeah, did a drive-by. He drove, he? drove, drive drove round, mm -hmm. drove round the street and went, yeah, this is the average house price for this street. This mm -hmm. is the average whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> Never set foot in the house. Right. So didn't see it went all the way No, 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 no. <laughs> I had no clue because um, it's, like double it's double it's double extent. Yeah. <laughs> it's been best garden in the street. Yeah. It's got a hot tub and everything. It does, but yeah. it, but it has had extensive mm -hmm. work inside and out um, to improve the the, the, the footprint. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a lot of a lot of usable space. We have maximised all the space. Um, never even set foot in the house. Yeah, you know, but I would want my agent to care mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. But also, I would feel that if they'd seen and been and. And actually said, oh, you've had a lot of work to yeah. but they yep. care. Mm -hmm. And because they care, my trust improves. And because they mm -hmm. understand what we've had done, they're, they're in a better mm -hmm. position with which to sell it. Yeah, well, you've just summed, <coughs> summed up pretty much everything I was talking about earlier really, really nicely. So clearly you're emotionally attached to the house. I have invested a lot yeah. of yeah. 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 time Making it a home. Making yeah. it a home. That's yeah. right. Time and money, yeah. Which means you're absolutely the worst person on earth who could possibly sell it. Oh, I'm terrible. You <laughs> I are couldn't too, sell it. Because you are too, too emotionally attached to too it. Too near to it, yeah. So you may have be the best sales guy in the world, but you should never sell your own house. Oh, no, I'm... Because you're too yeah. attached to it. Uh, so you want the agent to care, yep. and it's it sounds like a bespoke house, lots of different things to it. So if you've taken the time to explain all of that to me and poured your heart and soul out in, sure. into the story, and then I send some Johnny with a key to do a viewing, what's, what's the, the point? point? Yeah, Because they're what not going to the know the story, and they're not going to be able to sell it to the viewer either. This comes back to why we do it the way we do it. Yeah. So it sounds like the right way, may I say, Nick? May I say, yeah. Well, the results say so. Indeed, so, uh, the stats to back good. it up. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, what was the quick stat before we go? You were chatting to Boyd Mayover. What was the some corporates have? Forty no. percent of right move leads never get ranked. It's not even mm. corporates. For, uh, just under forty percent of leads that come in via right move to agents mailboxes do not even get answered. Mm. Wow, well, that's that crazy. is that's business that's suicide. Just business yeah. That's just it's money. Just, that's just literally that's throwing money. Anyway. So anyway, as you know, we do have some show sponsors. Very and, good. Uh, the sponsor is to the tune of zero pounds and pence. <laughs> so the first thing I'd like to do is, is give you your Yondel. Yondel socks. Uh, Yondel socks. Oh, so you, you've got some of those Rubber. ready. Yes. I, I, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to put your Wondome oh, glasses right. on. Thanks, Wondome. Wondo. It's not, okay. not brand damaging at all. No, okay. okay. I can't Thanks. see you anymore. Yeah. Wondome. Wondome. Uh, thanks, Wondome, for these. Thank you. Um, Thank I've you. now got pairs of these in both of my cars. Excellent. Well yeah, yeah, yeah. So really, it's one thing to say and that is happy, happy new year, year. Shalom. Shalom.